Space traffic management is defined by the International Academy of Astronautics as the set of technical and regulatory provisions to promote safe access to outer space, safe operations in outer space, and safe return from outer space to Earth free from physical or radio frequency interference. You can understand the necessity of space traffic management, you have to understand the phenomenon which it responds to. Space junk, or orbital debris, are the terms that are used interchangeably to refer to the anthropogenic, or human-made, items which are in orbit in space. According to NASA's Orbital Debris Program Office, upwards of 23,000 objects of larger than 10 centimeters in diameter are presently in orbit, and of these 23,000 anthropogenic objects, only 3,000 are functional. They also estimate that the number of objects larger than one millimeter in diameter is as large as 100 million items. Even these tiny objects can do major damage because they're moving at as fast as 22,300 miles per hour. That's faster than a speeding bullet. As these objects continue to collide, they break into smaller fragments and exponentially increase the population of orbital debris in outer space. What does it matter to us if stuff is up there bumping around in lower Earth orbit? Well, satellites play a much larger role in your daily life than you might realize. Space systems as a whole enable all sorts of key functions here on Earth. First and foremost, global communications. Second, navigation, positioning, and timing, also known as GPS. Third, scientific observation. And fourth, weather monitoring. This means that Everything you do on a daily basis, from texting your friend, to eating your lunch, to navigating your way to and from work, was likely, at least in part, made possible by the presence of satellites. Satellites also have key national security applications. Military reconnaissance satellites are used in the event of a terrestrial conflict to basically keep tabs on what's happening here on Earth. And they're also used to sense incoming nuclear or conventional missile attacks. This is why, from the perspective of national security experts, the threat of a kinetic or physical or cyber attack on a military satellite is of such great concern. The proliferation of space junk is a growing threat to space operations. Projections show that even if all launches were halted tomorrow, the amount of space junk would continue to increase as a result of breakups and collisions. A useful term here is carrying capacity, which is borrowed from the field of ecology. Carrying capacity refers to the amount of beings or items or objects that a given ecosystem can cater to without anybody having to compete or without any loss of life. Take, for example, a turtle pond. Let's say the carrying capacity of this turtle pond is 10 turtles. If for some reason the birth rate of this population begins to exceed the death rate, then the turtles will have to start competing for food and space and whatever other resources it is that turtles need and the population has exceeded the carrying capacity of their ecosystem. In the context of space operations, we would know that we had exceeded our orbital carrying capacity when congestion in space hinders our ability to take action or make decisions in order to avoid the loss or degradation or deprivation of these vital space operations. So why don't we just get rid of it? Well, that's much easier said than done. The European Space Agency, in collaboration with a startup named ClearSpace, have a mission set for launch in 2025 that will retrieve a single piece of space junk. It's a part of a rocket that was on mission in 2013, the cone actually, if I'm not mistaken. And in order to retrieve this cone, they're sending a four-armed self-destructing robot into space. And it's no simple task. The European Space Agency likens this mission to trying to grab a bus that's spinning out of control on a highway, and you don't know how fast the bus is moving or exactly which direction it's moving in until you get close. So our forearm self-destructing robot will have to align its movement with the rocket cone as it approaches it, grab onto it, and then safely pull both itself and the cone into Earth's atmosphere so that both the cone and the robot completely burn up upon re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. This project, uh, which is getting a single piece of space junk, albeit a large piece of space junk, is estimated to cost uh, $111 million.
fundamental challenge of removing space junk from outer space is a long-term obstacle, as countries and companies will need to continue to innovate cheaper and more reliable means of taking out the trash. The more pressing issue in the short term is the realization of space traffic management framework that will enable all spacefaring nations to continue providing us with these vital services. Presently, no single authority provides a widely available and comprehensive database on the location of anthropogenic space items. Every company and country maintains their own data set, and while some provide partial or full information with the public or with their allies, many do not. This means we can't even agree as to the location of these items in space. Now, to a certain degree, this apprehension about data sharing makes sense. Satellites are a vital piece of a nation's national security infrastructure, so a country may be wary about sharing sensitive military information with the public or with a partner. But no spacefaring actor or country will be able to reap the great military benefits endowed by satellites if we exceed our orbital carrying capacity. So what's the way forward? Space Policy Directive Number 3, which was published by the White House in January of 2018, recognized that space congestion was posing a threat to U.S. space operations, and further recognized that emerging commercial ventures in space were increasingly outpacing efforts to craft and implement government policies and processes to address these activities. This policy directive also recognized the importance of establishing a new approach to space traffic management, the global nature of the problem, and it outlined various guidelines and goals for moving forward with respect to space traffic management. While this was an important step forward, it's not quite sufficient, because space is a global commons. The U.S. certainly can and should take on a leadership role in this process, but we'll be doomed without the buy-in of our partners. There are a few key norms of behavior that will help to ensure a prosperous, safe environment for all in perpetuity. The first is transparency, which, in the context of space, would manifest as the timely and actionable sharing of space situational awareness data. The second is predictability, which means advance notice of launches or change in orbital path. And the third is accountability, which could take the form of a meaningful enforcement and oversight mechanism of existing space treaties, such as the UN Treaty on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space. While this treaty outlined many useful guidelines, its lack of an enforcement mechanism has meant that a lot of its goals have yet to have been achieved. The benefits endowed to humanity by outer space are simply too vast to allow a tragedy of the commons to occur in lower Earth orbit. An actionable space traffic management framework paired with the behavioral norms of transparency, predictability, and accountability is the first step towards protecting this vital piece of our environment.